Welcome to the Mike on Much podcast. I'm your host, Mike Veerman. I'm here with my friend and trusted producer, Max Kerman. We are here with our pop culture aficionado, Shane Cunningham. And we are here with intern Erica. Erica, get on the mic a little bit more, you know? You yeah, didn't say anything speak last up. Episode. I feel that's what the people want, you know? Mm-hmm. Is there... Oh, you got to turn it on. There she is. <laughs> Good thing we didn't go step. with the engineer, Erica. The yeah. last episode, you were a little quiet. Now, is that because there was some Twitter backlash? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling it? I've been there. What so. was it specifically? Yeah. I have a hater. <laughs> you did. Well, so my the, first hater. The, I did feel actually bad listening back to that episode because... Typically, when it comes to um, retelling any news event, we just say, Mike, do it. Because Mike <laughs> is by far the best of any anybody that we know at retelling, you know, a movie or something happened, a basketball mm-hmm. game or a news item, anything. And so but for SNC-Lavalin, which is very complicated and very highbrow, we're like, Erica, this is like... Go for it. Give us the goods. <laughs> which is, which <laughs> we if you did to there. me, yeah, we really threw you under the bus, but you did a great job. But um, you, people were surprised that you didn't know what uh, draft dodging draft dodging was. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so somebody named uh, Mark, Mark tweets again on Twitter, uh, said, love the show, but my God, how does Erica <laughs> not know what draft dodging is? Uh, and for some reason, we liked that tweet. <laughs> I, I just like was that any, Shane? Well, it was I think Matt. I liked it. Yeah. Okay. Anytime Actually, someone tweets, it's there. good to say, "Hey, yeah. we know you're there." Not but, if they're hating. Yeah, <laughs> not if they're a that's hater. A good point. Did you feel like he was hating on you? Yeah, he's my first hater. Seriously. <laughs> well, welcome to public life. Thanks. But maybe it's. I don't think it's so much that he's hating. It's obviously easy to take the tone out of context when you don't hear the tone of their voice. But I think it was a, like an oddity, like you not knowing Charlie Sheen. It's like no, no, how no, 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 Jack Nicholson. I know Charlie Sheen. Oh, you do. Oh, right. Of course, Tiger Blood. <laughs> oh, right. Winning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Winning. Yeah. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> But it's in that world where it's almost like a point of fascination. Like, wow. Like, she doesn't know what draft dodging is. But so I asked many of my peers, mm-hmm. many of which did. Actually, all of them did not had not heard the term. We all knew what conscription was in the Vietnam War, but I just hadn't heard the so term. So you knew what conscription was, but didn't know of what course, draft dodging was. Of course. I know was. what con- Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Cool. Also, actually, on the weekend, fun fact, I was with a champagne boy named Felix who mm. told me he did not know what draft dodging ever was. But he's from Germany. He's but a foreigner. Get, get this. He told me he wants... Dodged a draft in Germany. But they probably call <laughs> it something dodger. different in German. Oh, yeah. In Germany, I think you have to do serve mandatory. Like a, yeah, serve. that's There's, what he said. You have and to serve he, uh, one year, I think. Or yeah, or volunteer. Like so he volunteer. faked his way out. Yeah. He faked. Really? What did he do? Did he fake an injury? Hmm. Hmm. They tell the story about my dad almost drafting the, uh, drafting the dodge, dodging the draft. Hmm. So my dad uh, tells the story. I think he'd be fine with me telling this. He doesn't really <laughs> care. He's lived in Canada since 1970. But basically... Um, he maintains that if he had been um, interviewed uh, for the military service, I guess that's how it goes, like six months later, they would have taken him no matter what. But um, he told the people at the at the Army that he was a dr- uh, drug addict and that uh, I think that he was a homosexual, which at the time was very frowned upon. Mm. And uh, they're like – and I think he said he d- drank a lot of coffee and was very like, jittery that day. And <laughs> that maybe he maybe there's something else going on. Who knows? <laughs> but um, – and they didn't take him, but he he thinks six months later he would have been he would have had to serve in the, in the draft. So I get it from my father, basically. Wow, yeah, <laughs> 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 which is f- totally fine with me. Um, but uh, this is actually a pretty. Oh, uh, one thing I was going to ask you, Shane, actually, is that you have a tendency to really respond to every single person's <laughs> note and yeah. get into long winded conversations. I'll go into our DMs and there's like a back and <laughs> oh, forth, yeah. and it's always like ends with me like and. Fuck you. Like, I'm pretty, <laughs> I get pretty heated. <laughs> They're yeah. like, Shane, I was just saying. I'm like, no excuse. This is the best podcast ever. <laughs> you have no right. Mike, do we have to, uh, uh, you know, create some rules for Shane when it comes to his interactions in the DMs? Do you think? Do you, because sometimes I think there's a, there's a, um, well, by the way, no one ever is under the assumption that it's anyone other than me. No, but sometimes they go, is this Mike? Is <laughs> no, this no, Max? Well, that happens all the time. No, you go, no, it's Shane. That no, happened like that, six times I, in the I, DMs. I saw, And then I go, it's a Shane. And they go, I was kidding. Oh. And they always follow up with that. Oh, uh, okay. Because usually, you know, the grammar's way off. Like, I'm using words incorrectly. And they're like, okay, this is Shane. And I'm always like, my, <laughs> my wife and my baby, you know. Um, yeah. I guess Mike has a wife and baby, but. They can tell by the way I'm speaking. So, so we should let them roam free when it comes to responding. Got to Gotta let birds fly, man. Sure. Fair no, enough. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's it's always an interesting question when it comes to like because uh, we are we're a group, right? We mm-hmm. we so in some ways represent each other, even yeah. though we're individuals. You That's know, I right. had this conversation with my wife where it's like, you know, when she was talking about Shane's, uh, you know, at the time controversial stance on the Bieber uh, hoax post, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she was like. Uh, 
because I, I was like, I was like, well, Shane's gonna have opinions. I'm like, the, the strength of our show is the fact that all three of us have differing opinions, and that we're going to have a debate about it. I'm like, she's like, well, I mean, like, but it's your, it's like the show that but you it's guys under the are moniker all of Mike on. on Much. Mike on Much comes out as saying we yeah. love the Bieber joke. Well, and we're having differing opinions <laughs> yeah. too. Like, thing. I thought, I thought you guys were. Having the stance of the the other person, yeah, like the other side of the we argument, were. totally. Yeah. Like if I watched, I said, "Hey, listen, if you watch the View and Joy Behar says something crazy, you don't you don't put that on Whoopi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoopi's got her own opinions. Yeah, you know true. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, to your point, Max, the question is though, when Shane's speaking for all of us, I guess from the Twitter account or yeah. on the Insta DMs. The only reason I want to flag it is that Shane has a fascination with <laughs> trolls and you are sensitive. <laughs> well, it's which is that, kind of like a, a weird like uh, oxymoron. Well, what, you what do you mean? Because you, you don't want trolls to be so sensitive, but then you can tend to take things very personally. Yeah. yeah a friend of ours who remain well, nameless. So was, no, he, what, what I don't like is... <laughs> wait, what was that? <laughs> a friend of ours who remain nameless said, it's funny that uh, Shane doesn't like people being sensitive over jokes when he's the most sensitive person that I, I know. I bet you Dan Hamilton said that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one, I, I, I don't, I, all I, all I don't like is when people think they're being anonymous mm. and they're saying things they would never say to your face where everything I say, I will say to someone's face and I'm a very, I like, I like being teased. I like being mm-hmm. all, all that stuff and that discourse and all that, just cause I come back at you doesn't mean I don't like so it. So that's like my hater. So then mm-hmm. when I saw all his hate comments, I tried to internet stalk him to find out who, where, where he works, what he does. Mm-hmm. No last name, no information, nothing on the Twitter. Uh, I couldn't uh, find anything. He's rather anonymous. Yeah, I yeah. tried to find his LinkedIn, where he lives. It's anything. called a burner account. These, it's very common. Yeah, with and these so trolls. that's where they post all the hate, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So you can't get back at them. Exactly. It's well, not fair. No, it's your, cowardly. Your anger at Mark from at Mark tweets again. Also, and I should be sharing. This isn't doxing the guy. I mean, he, he's posted on oh. public Twitter because uh, then he did say. This is a, a follow-up tweet. Yeah, there is also a zero percent chance she voted in the provincial, provincial election last year. That was a little condescending, I guess. That's yeah. super rude. Well, did, that was did, that was. Did you vote in it? You don't have to tell us you voted. Yes, for it. I did. There you go. I, of course, I voted. He crossed the line when it came to there because because he <laughs> did wa- he like that tweet or no? <laughs> no, that one wasn't <laughs> okay, like good. in my screen grab. I don't know what's been done since then. We we should uh, have this guy call in. We should talk to him. Yeah. But by yeah, the way, here's the thing. Yeah, Mark, want, if you want to be in touch, you you tweeted us. Here's what I would say. I think that there's a healthy amount of interaction, meaning you can totally disagree with things we say. Sometimes we sound completely ignorant and ill-informed. And so people can have differing opinions, or they can be like, I don't like this aspect of the show. That's kind of the engagement. It's not like everybody that listens to every show likes every aspect of it. Yeah, and I uh, frankly don't like it when shows become tribalistic and people are just like hooting and hollering because they're all agreeing on the same thing. Like I listen to a lot of political shows. And to be honest, like I li- like the various personalities in Pod Save America, and I consider myself like a liberal progressive person, but they're just all preaching to the choir. It's not even really that interesting to me. Sure. I haven't listened in a while, so maybe it's improved, but it's just like, it's literally just like Team Democrat hooting and hollering for every, it's like, and uh, Medicare for all, woo! And it's like, I, okay, I agree with Medicare for all, but it's a nuanced conversation, and there's a variety of opinions we can talk about. And, and yeah, so I, I prefer shows where there's actually a variety of opinions. Yeah, Jim, yeah. It was like my problem with CNN or Fox. It's yeah. too one-sided for me to mm-hmm. take seriously. Yeah. I, uh, I, for our listeners, we you'll be hearing this on a Tuesday. The Raptors are playing Game Two in their series against Orlando tonight. We talked a lot about sports in uh, yesterday's episodes. So we won't go too deep on sports right now. Uh, but one of the reasons this is the only pod you're going to get uh, for this week, aside from the one yesterday, is because Max, you're going to Miami. I'm going to Miami, a little vacation. Lauren ended up having a little window of time between her next placement for nursing school. So uh, I said, let's go on a little vacation. And uh, so we're going to get some heat this week in Miami. Got any recommendations for me? Oh, what was that bar we went to at the... the oh, yeah. We, went we to were on cool South bar. Beach. We went to a bachelor party, the three of us, mm-hmm. uh, for our friend Sean Dawson and Matthew McPeak uh, on South Beach. And what was that bar? Ted's? There's, oh, yeah. It was a cool bar. It's like a little little like neon sign. Mm-hmm. But it, we'd always kind of pre-drink there before we'd go out. And there's yeah. a place with the bodega. Oh, that was cool, too. It was like a taco shop in the new one in the back. And there was that bar. Do you remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Barely. I was very boring. Yeah. yeah, you didn't even remember that I was on the trip. <laughs> yeah. This morning, you were like, you were on the trip? And I was like, I was there. Yeah. And, uh, they we, all blend together. Which I didn't take personally because I don't remember anything I do with anybody. Like, because we do so many group activities. And so I'm just like, oh, you were at that movie or you were at this. Yeah. And I never remember. So. Exactly. So you're going to Miami? Yeah. I mean, the difference between traveling um, with your partner uh, who's still in school and with a bunch of dudes is that... It's much cheaper traveling on a bachelor trip because you go four to a room. It's, uh, you know, everything is sort of pooled together. But on this one, it's old, old Maxi Boy picking up the bill. <laughs> I was just, that was my next question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You pay for it all. Well, in this case, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's promising me that she'll contribute. I mean, she will 
when she when she's employed. She sounds skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's it's all good. We, we're we're in a Airbnb modest place. It'll be it'll be good. Right. Yeah, that'll yeah. be a good time. So the second she gets a job and starts making an income, are you going to ask her for the money back? From the <laughs> yeah. He hits her with a bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The all the receipts, yeah. Yeah. All neatly the organized. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm the least organized person ever, but when it comes to this specific thing, I'm like, I've, I've been preparing. Uh, no, but it should be good. I'll be back on Friday. Yeah. yeah. So for our listeners, we are recording this uh, on a Monday night. You'll be hearing this tomorrow, uh, which is like a Tuesday. So lots is going on. Uh, uh, the big news, obviously, is that Notre Dame is, is burning the cathedral in, in Paris. Um, we don't really know any other information because it's kind of happening in real time. We're doing this at like 6 o'clock on, on, a, uh, on Monday evening. You'll be hearing this tomorrow. But uh, My wife said they were doing renovations and something went wrong. Right. So it, yeah. was, it was an accident at this point or it was like That's unintentional? That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I mean, we and nobody's been hurt. It's all kind of just oh, happening. So. Um, uh, Obama tweeted, and it's so interesting – I find it so comforting to read Obama, any Obama tweet in, in a time like this compared to the normal shit we get from Trump every day. Notre Dame uh, is one of the world's great treasures. and we're Do it in the Obama voice. Yeah. Notre Dame. <laughs> what? <laughs> Notre, I, try to, no, yeah, I don't know why I came up with that. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. <laughs> no, that's not what I was trying. Plymouth Rock landed on us. No, Notre Dame is one of the world's great treasures. No, that's not it either. That's it's more shit. about like pausing, I find. Yeah, okay. Obama. Obama talks. Notre Dame is one of the world's great treasures. And we're thinking of the people in France in your time of grief. It's in our nature to mourn when we see history lost. But it's also in our nature to rebuild for tomorrow as, as strong as we can. As like classic Obama, you know, he's comforting. He's uplifting. He's looking to tomorrow. Things are going to get better. Anyway, yeah, yeah, no, he sees so sort of like the the, the 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 sadness that's in front of us, but mm-hmm. you need the hope, uh, you know, that's coming tomorrow. Yeah. Um, did you guys see Trump's tweet? Well, no, what did he no. say? <laughs> Read it. So find Trump's latest tweet about the tragedy, because <laughs> just didn't... as a contrast, it's just read it. Okay, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. So horrible to watch the massive fire at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Perhaps flying water tankers could be used to put it out. Must act quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody then tweeted, they go, <laughs> flying water tankers would actually collapse the rest of the structure. They're trying to save parts of it with the historic art and pieces of the... But well, he's just, just starting a brainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike yeah, Obama. There's no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no bad ideas in a yeah, brainstorm. he said perhaps. Yeah. Oh, just like... <laughs> <laughs> perhaps. He's just such a know-it-all. Like, it's just like he can't help but being like, why aren't they doing the flying water tankers? I'm watching this thing burn. And it, you know, you know, there's going to be some ex- exclamation point in any of his tweets, and like something that's a kind of a somber affair. Must act quickly! Exclamation point. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. It's but an interesting contrast in leadership. Speaking styles. of uh, Twitter, we almost had a tweet go viral, oh. and I'd like to take credit for it, but this was Mike acting anonymously with a pretty good meme. Yeah, so explain. <laughs> oh, I'm a little disappointed that it didn't go. So yeah. we were watching uh, the Raptors game one on uh, Saturday, and I had some people over my place, and uh, we were all having some drinks, and it was a good time. And uh, I was getting frustrated because in the second quarter, they were down like 16 points, and I was kind of getting mad at the, the Raptors coach. His name is Nick Nurse. And Nick, I've noticed this thing about him is he's a first-year head coach. Uh, whenever there was like a national TV game, like it was an OVO night, he would wear like gold and black, like OVO. Like he seemed to kind of like – get big for, like, the national TV games. So I was kind of wondering what he would wear for first game of the playoffs. And he comes out, and he's in, like, this checkered outfit with his tie and his glasses. And I was like, what does he look like? I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And then there was just this shot of him on the sideline, like, kind of, like, playing with his belt as he was like, well, they just scored another three. And I was, and I said something, like, in the moment, like, I was like, oh, this fucking guy coaching, like, in a van down by the river, classic Matt Foley. Like, everybody in the room laughs. Like, I pause it, and I'm like, oh, man, he really looks like that. So I take a photo, and then I just put it on my Insta story. I'm like, uh, coaching in a playoff series in a van down by the river. This classic SNL sketch with with Chris, Chris Farley, if you don't know it. Anyway, I post it. Shane responds like with the ha 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 ha, which he usually won't even respond like unless it's genuinely funny. And then, oh yeah, I was in the Mike on Much account. That's too. right. Yeah, I'm always. Uh, I knew it was your response. <laughs> so then, and my brother's like, "That's actually really damn funny." And then our buddy Mark Myers, there, but they were talking about something. But then I, I actually was like, I needed to put it side by side. So now I'm like screen grabbing a picture of Chris Farley in the outfit, and I screen grab thing, and I put it together. My brother's like, "That is hilarious." Send that to him. I'm saying to, to someone from work that could like actually be like a viral thing. And I was like, oh, "Okay," but I'm actually kind of drunk and paying. Attention to the game 
But I'm like, no, this is actually a pretty funny side by side. I post it and I never like think like whatever, but I was like, I think maybe NBA Twitter might like pick this up. And Blake Murphy, who's like a big Raptors writer, he like I I will I will say this. So when I post something on my like Twitter, it's usually like my kid, right? And like you'll get responses like that are really nice, like, oh cute, whatever. I've never had more responses than I did to the side by side Matt Foley joke. Like oh, wow. I probably had like 25 or 30 people like either send back like the laughing crying face or whatever so i was like maybe this has a chance to like catch in the nba twitter world like i don't think anybody else saw this comparison did blake murphy tweet it oh he was like this is great i didn't ask him to tweet it but he i should have it's hard but then so you the three of us were not together for this game yeah but i got a tweet from you and i could just tell (laughs) you were so sorry text i could tell us how excited you were about this because and nothing makes you happier than being like Three drinks in and watching the Raptors, and they at the time they were winning and they hadn't and fallen apart yet. You just did a killer funny, yeah. Like that's a, oh no, yeah. those are the big three, and yeah. Then, yeah. And then people are complimenting, uh, you know, a piece of copy. Yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, Mike is on cloud nine because because you you text me like Max, make this go viral, <laughs> <laughs> as if I could just snap my fingers. And do I it. say I think it has a shot to yeah. you know on NBA Twitter, but then of course they lose the game, which of course is horrible for life. Yeah, but it's great for the tweet, I think, Makes because then sense. I just pictured like the headlines, like coaching like a man who lives down by the river in a van. And by the, Erica, do you know what we're talking about? Yeah, you. No. To be honest, no. here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you could ask. No, no. Here's the thing. I didn't even remember this. The sketch. It is yeah. a niche humor, and like you have to be a certain age and a Chris Farley fan. And really into SNL to know that reference. You think? I, I didn't really know it, to be honest. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You didn't know Jeez. that sketch? I, like, it was, it's vaguely familiar, but it wasn't right. like, oh, I know that. It was a little niche, I yeah. guess. But, but what's good about it, too, is it's not like that tweet is just locked in that time period. Because the raps are going to go on a bit of a playoff run. Mm-hmm. So I think we should sick our fans and get the tweet going. Oh, and is it and in Reddit and stuff. If, if they win or lose. Dude. Well, here's the thing. If Nick Nurse turns out to be someone incompetent, it's better for our tweet's chance of going viral. If they lose. But it's yeah. that's terrible for my health and yeah. good mood. You'll be very sad. <laughs> so I'd rather Nick Nurse turn out to be a genius and then the the, the, the image goes away. How did you process the, the rap's loss? Were you like despondent for a while or were you like, you know, how did you feel? Dan Hamilton literally just sent me a text. Uh, I'll just read it verbatim. Uh, he said, uh, so Mike, meaning me, and then in quotations, I think I have a more, I think I have more of a nuanced basketball opinion. Also, Mike, 90 minutes later uh, and multiple Coors Light after the game with an acoustic guitar in hand has written a two minute opus titled 0 for 12 on how shitty Kyle Lowry played. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me if I've forgiven him yet. And I was like, yeah, I'm past it now, assuming we win game two. Yeah. But so like I was like a roller coaster of emotion throughout the game. Like even when we were down 16 in the second, I wasn't worried. We make that comeback. Uh yeah, and then, like, Kawhi was cooking, and, yeah, them sort of blowing that last possession with DJ Augustine was a, a heartbreaker. Mm-hmm. And then I, I have an acoustic guitar at the place, and, like, I had people over, but they wanted to watch the Leafs game, but I kind of commandeered everything. It was just singing, like, an acoustic ballad about how shitty. I was just really upset. You know I don't take these of things. Of course, well. yeah. Yeah. I saw you later that evening. It was actually a fun night. Yeah. Uh, it was Lights' birthday party, actually, on, good on, friend on of the Saturday podcast. night. Yeah, good friend yeah. of the pod. Happy birthday, Lights. I felt like that was, like, a Canadian who, like, the beaches, they were all there. Like, it was kind of like all these, like, yeah, from July Talk was there. Yeah. Uh, everyone from the office here at E1 yeah. was there. It was a good time. It was a great time. Who do you think got approached the most uh, by fans? <laughs> um, Lights and I equally got, uh, I think, approached a lot. Do you have a little clicker? <laughs> <laughs> Behind your back? <laughs> no, and Lights is so recognizable. And she's been like... Um, around... Like, There's a lot of people who are like, you were my favorite artist in high school. Like, She was like a big deal. Totally like 10 years ago too like and she's re- and she's maintained it as well so do you uh, ever wear those rainbow fringes out in public <laughs> <laughs> like the the, the, yeah. the the max jacket no i do not mm-hmm. no no further um, questions <laughs> no further questions <laughs> <laughs> um but you know speaking of um generation gaps you know because we're making fun of erica for we're, not we're knowing not making fun no, we're just asking we're, we're erica do you feel like it's we're fair. making fun of you no no all right um, do you also feel on this podcast you have a microphone that you have the platform to speak whenever you want yes good good because I know that we can all get a bit dominant on the mic but sometimes jump in. that's why I'm quiet because I, I really am thinking about what I want to put out into the world mm. there you go good. You know? thoughtful um, <laughs> Coachella happened this weekend mm-hmm. and oh we, is this your generation gap segue yeah, yeah oh, this is my segue um, and that's I want to know because we went to Coachella two years ago yeah and we had the best time I was talking about it with Lauren the other day I was like what a cool experience that we got to go like 
Wasn't that an awesome weekend? It was brilliant. Yeah, it was. It was so so fun that we got to do that. Like we you went played, from, didn't you? Yeah, we yeah our That's Kells, huge. Our Kells played, and um, we rented this house in Palm Springs. Oh, it there was, was the a pool. best. We had like six of our buddies. Raps were in the playoffs against Milwaukee, so I was able to watch hoops during oh. the day. And our buddy fell in love. That's right. Oh now he's got a, he's a got baby, a baby now. Yeah. A baby came out of Coachella. Man. Yeah, our friend Al and our friend uh, Bobus uh, ended up shacking up, and now they have a little baby, yeah. baby scout. Baby scout, who was at my place watching the raps on Saturday. And to be fair, th- no one thought Al had a chance. He was just drunkenly in the pool, just telling Bobus how much he, her name's Sarah Bobus, how much he loved her. And then, and mm-hmm. we were like, oh, there's no chance this will ever happen. She's a little bit older. Next thing you know, they're going on dates. Yeah, now they're you got to put it out in the world. Yeah, you never Make know. It happened. So shout out to those guys. Yeah, man. I just met the baby actually. Hey, by the way, I um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I've been thinking about a podcast from a few uh, episodes ago when I asked, uh, "Are the guys talking how I don't visit any of the babies?" Yeah. And then you just go, "It's out there," <laughs> <laughs> and, th- and that "it's out there" has been ringing in my mind. It doesn't go unnoticed. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't go unnoticed. And so I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna." So last week, oh, uh, you're gonna go on a baby meeting tour? That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I went to go see Bobus, uh, Bobus and Al's baby Scout, very cute. And then I went to go see my friend, my old roommate from uh, 85 Raquel Dave Friesen and his uh, wife Christine's baby Jake uh, yeah. Monday and Tuesday night so I'm kind of I'm getting there you're getting there yeah, yeah. <laughs> I met Lucy though you have yeah. oh I guess on the show Is that, that was a address? forced meeting did you just put your did address you just put on your the address show down? oh you beeped that one okay. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't live <laughs> <laughs> pod uh, fans showing yeah. up someone that you're quarreling with on social media is like <laughs> yeah. troll yeah Mark. there's a rock bro. Bro. yeah um but anyway so back to coachella um and by the way i'm so happy we got to go to it because it gives us like more of a context for now like coachella's like this weekend i was like oh yeah i remember that okay you can kind of imagine it for yourself because, absolutely because you've been there um but i feel like lately especially in the last couple of years i feel kind of more disconnected with youth culture now more than ever there's all these artists that i've never heard of that are like xx like, charlie yeah. charlie x no not charlie she's oh, she's X. of our era no um, uh they the rapper like who got killed oh, who got yeah, killed yeah. yeah yeah and there's like there's a bunch of littles out there that i don't know yeah, little, little zan little zan yeah. Um, Takashi B- Billy Eilish or well, Eilish? Eilish. Eilish. Well, you messaged me. Oh, check this. Oh, or no, it was Manager Ash. She yeah. sent us this link of this clip of uh, Billy Eilish, and she was interviewed a year ago when she was 16. And then they asked her all the same questions again when she was 17. Yeah. And it was this very cool viral video. And then I got I went down a rabbit hole of her, and all of them start started like, unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know who Billie Eilish is. And I was like, I don't know who that is. I've been un- like, have I been under a rock? Like, how come I well, don't know that? This is it. There's all this if stuff you did live under a rock, you would have given the address to it by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm saying is that there's all these uh, massive pop stars in the world right now that I feel like I don't have any concept for because they've become famous so quickly. And it's just like music or uh, culture that doesn't really speak to me necessarily. Do you guys feel more disconnected to yeah. it? Yes. Certainly. I, yeah. But I didn't feel connected to like youth culture when I was young. Like oh, I've sure. always just liked the Beatles, man. <laughs> like when it comes to music, like I've always sort of had an antiquated taste and haven't been super interested in like what's been going on. Like I kind of like I like the Strokes and Kings Leon, but that's only because like my friends liked them. <laughs> Very modern. Uh, but, but I was young, man. <laughs> but I was young. Sure, like, you know sure. what I mean? Like I was whatever like a Billie Eilish fan would be like, in the, you know, in those early 2000s when we were all like hanging out and partying and stuff like that. Like my friends would be into shit that I would then listen to. Yeah. Right. Um, but I was never like my brother was the guy that would seek out new bands. Mm-hmm. He'd like find cool shit. To I'm this not, day, he's still that. Totally. Way, yeah. Like totally. Like. I'm not a cool music person. Hey, Erica, is it Eilish or Elish or what is it? I think it's Eilish. Eilish, I think. Could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. So, but I mean, I feel like your business is music. So maybe the, the, the idea is that you should listen to everything and take it. Yeah, generally I feel like I have my ear to the ground and I like new music Fridays and I'm intrigued by new music. But yeah, just like lately, I'm just like, what are these kids listening to? I just kind of like, do you like Billie Eilish? I I think, I think her tunes are kind of cool. I Um, like them. I'm a fan. Yeah. And her style is interesting. She's Mm -hmm. like this. Goth. Biff Naked 2.0. That's what I called her. <laughs> Another <laughs> modern reference. <laughs> um, well, Biff Naked's a fan of the podcast. So yeah, I she did I say she tweeted at us. A really nice message uh, in response to my uh, father. Uh, oh, I didn't know episode. that. Yeah. She said big fan of the pod. In yeah. It. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, would you guys want to go back to Coachella or do you guys think you're too old for it? Well, I did have a great time in Coachella. Don't get me wrong. But I had the best time at JFL. Like, to me, it was oh, like sure. three Coachellas. Well, 
but I feel like the Coachella experience is more about just the people watching uh, than it is mm-hmm. about the music, right? Like, yeah. So that would be kind of fun to it's go It's a back. far more like elite and sort of like um, unique experience, especially because... Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, because like you were playing. So we, Shane and I specifically had like artist passes, which we've talked about. I think the nut was very uh, upset about that. He didn't get this. Oh yeah. He couldn't go to the the artist world village or whatever, where like Leonardo DiCaprio hangs out. I actually, that year we saw, uh, um, Ariana Grande and and Mac Miller pass us as we were walking through. Oh, that's right. They they came through. It was like the whole entourage. We're like, Oh, there they go. And I saw Leo and you saw Leo. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, that experience in and of itself, like people pay, (laughs) I can't even imagine what the number would be to pay for that experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? So in order to sort of get that because we were doing the podcast there was amazing. And like a bunch of the champagne boys were there. It was just a really great time. I think we should try to go back next year. I'd love to. It would have to literally be for work because I don't know how else I'd explain it to my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys potting? Oh, yeah. We'll be uh, yeah. We'll be just canada no, let, 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 Let's pot down there next next year. I would love to. Well, yeah. Even if you like, would you guys be playing it? Is that the only way it kind of mm, works? Maybe. I mean, it's, it's super competitive to get a spot in there. Like, the fact that we even got to play is kind of incredible. And no one cares about rock music anymore. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I don't know. But maybe the pod could go down. We'll, we'll figure it out. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, what do you think of uh, Ariana bringing out uh, NSYNC? <laughs> Did you guys watch that? the clips? No. Do tell. Uh, well, Ariana Grande, she got the big closing spot. So, like, the Sunday night slot that's reserved for, like, you know, Beyonce or the biggest artist. They were in talks with Kanye. It didn't work out. So, they brought her in for reported $8 million. But money well spent because she's probably the biggest pop star in the world currently. Um and just like I guess the buzz and the PR alone is worth whatever you spent on Ariana. Anyway, as part of her big show, she brought out um, Mace and Puffy to do a bit of uh, Mo Money. Mo Money. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, but didn't Drake do that literally like three years ago at OVO? Yeah, it must be funny to be Mace where he has the respect and love of all these like modern Sitting superstars. Sitting by the phone waiting for the call. just like, who's going to call me for this year's Coachella? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, who's, uh, who's not? Anyway, so um, and then she brought out four-fifths of NSYNC. I, can you guess the one that wasn't there? <laughs> Lance? Come oh, on. Justin Timberlake. <laughs> oh. The only one that's yeah. actually got shit to do right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the four, four-fifths of NSYNC, uh, NSYNC, not Justin, come out and they do uh, uh, Tearing Up My Heart with her. And um, She's the fifth member. Yeah, and JC, JC was there, but his, his hair's all long and uh, mm-hmm. they were doing like the dance moves like Joey Fatone, Chris Kirkpatrick. They had the whole gang. But speaking of generations, like, doesn't that seem like, I get, like, Erica, how, I mean, you're not familiar with Jack Nicholson uh, or the draft dodging, but, like, is NSYNC a big, like, they're on the radar? Yeah. Like, as, like, a funny nostalgic you thing? Do like, 18-year-olds yeah. know? Or do you, were you, like, into them when you were, like, nine? You know what I mean? No, I didn't, I didn't really have an NSYNC phase. Like, you missed that thing, but now I you know so. them as this sort of, like, popular act from the 90s. Yeah, like house parties, you know. Like they, they would come to your house parties? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not Justin, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but listening to them and them getting into the rotation on the old DJ list. Erica, okay. do, you, yeah. do you have any thoughts on Coachella? Uh, did you want to go? Well, I'm curious what you say about this like VIP experience because I feel like Coachella now is just like one big commercial. Like mm-hmm. Coachella weekend on my Instagram, it's just like I can't even be on Instagram because all it is is like influencers tagging what they're wearing and everyone's at this cool, crazy party. But like the only opportunity I would have to go to Coachella would it's be as like... Well, the, if you do a good job, fingers Internet crossed. Erica. Yeah, if we go next year, you coming with? Hell, I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But other than that, I would just be able to go as like a general admission mm-hmm. schmo, yeah. and like, would that even be fun? Or is it just is it just this weekend designed around like influencers so they can get the best posts and make the most money and da 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 da? It's mostly they, that, I think. And they get all this free shit. Meanwhile, like, I'm gonna be paying seventeen dollars for a coffee every morning. And I'm yeah, there's an up. elite level that if you're you know, not part I, of it, you you do see two experiences. You kind of see what you know. It's like you spend your seven hundred dollars to go, and that's just your general admission. And then you see like there's all these elite areas that yeah. your wristband gets you into if you pay for the super elite experience. Yeah. And then there's like one above that that you know you can't even pay a certain amount to get into artist world. You actually yeah. have to know a band performer. Right. So you guys probably had a great time, and the nut probably had a shit weekend if he didn't. Get that well, he got enough elite things. Uh, the nut you never worry about the nut. He always finds ways. Oh, but he was he nut. wasn't happy about the wristband. Yeah. You know it's funny. Um, I, I feel like the older we get, the the more sort of apprehensive we are about going into these arenas with young people. Like, cause like, am I too old to be here? Like, you know, you kind of ask yourself that question if you're like in a certain bar and you re- look around and the demographics is like kind of young. Like, am I like the old guy here? Mm-hmm. I do love how Leo just goes every year. Doesn't like care. he doesn't give one fuck. He is aspirational, man. 
<laughs> well, if you're like consumed. the hottest guy in the world, yeah. it's kind of like you get a exception there. Yeah. And there's going the biggest star. There are going to be a segment of people that judge him and think he's lame for being the 50 year old hanging out with 22 year olds. Yeah. There will. But here's the question. Do you care what they think? And I don't think Leo does. Yeah. And that's kind of for anybody doing anything. It's just like how much you're going to concern yourself with the people that are judging what you're doing and how much you're just trying to enjoy yourself. Mm hmm. And also, if you're the coolest person in the world, it's a lot easier that every single person knows you as the biggest celebrity. Like, you don't feel as much of, like, an old weirdo. Right. Is he super cool? Leo? He looked I, like shit last or two years ago at Coachella. He, like, that's kind of care. his thing. He yeah. just gets in shape for the movie, then he falls out. But women still always love him because they only remember him from the movies. Yeah, sure. <laughs> there goes the guy from Catch Me If You Can. <laughs> would, you, would, you, would, you date, <laughs> would you date Leo? Yeah, you're in See? His, of course. Look at that. You're, you're in, in the wheelhouse. Like so. Leo today. Yeah. Yeah, I, I date any version of Leo. There you obviously. go. Obviously, anyone would. I feel. Yeah. See. Yeah. That's there fair. Yeah. Uh, who's who's Leo's comp on the female side? His like his peer, age age range and accomplishment. Who, Kate Winslet. Who who dates exclusively? Well, I guess I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna flip it and I was like, would you like would you date Kate Winslet if you were single? It's different because Kate Winslet was like, I think she's an attractive woman, but I don't think she was ever a sex symbol. She was always like, like a serious actor who's beautiful, but not like a sex symbol as much. Yeah. It's like you might marry Kate Winslet, but you wouldn't be like, she's so hot. Fair. Angelina Jolie. Yes. W w sorry. What's the question? Would you date her? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. That's a great comparison. Okay. A lot Boom. of kids. Whatever. She, when you're, no, wait, but again, when you're really rich, it doesn't matter how many kids you have. You get all the nannies after them and stuff. Fair enough. What about you? Would I date Angelina Jolie? Yeah. <laughs> what does this turn into? I don't know. Well, <laughs> well, no, he, I like, no, I love this. I love this. This is my favorite kind of conversation. I, I don't know. I'd have to have a chat with her. You know. Well, you have to get to know her. Well, do I enjoy hanging out with her? Mm -hmm. From like, what you've yeah, seen, Yeah, right, though. Mike. Just being famous isn't enough. Like, I don't know. Like, I've hung out with, uh, with, with like... <laughs> this sounds like such a lame, <laughs> humble brag. I've been around people that are super popular, and at first Say you're like, "Yeah, yeah name drop." Oh, you, Maxi, <laughs> it's you. And it's like, it's like at some point you're kind of like, like you know how you have a fantasy of what Natalie Portman would be like in your brain, and then yes. you're gonna meet them, and then after you get over the excitement of the fact that it's Natalie Portman, then it's like, oh right, I've got to actually spend time with you. And I have no idea what Natalie Portman's like. But I'm saying is, it's like. I can't like it would never be enough for me that they were famous and beautiful to actually spend like to stick around if they were shitty. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea what Angelina Jolie's like. I know that's a way more nuanced response than just do I find her hot? Yes, I find Angelina jo hot, Jolie hot, even though she's a little bit older than all of us. Okay, that's what I was getting at. Is that Leo significantly <laughs> older than Erica? Don't get me wrong. She didn't hesitate. I might get sick of Jolie after a few right. dates. <laughs> I might. What about you, Max? Would I date Angelina Jolie? Yes. <laughs> uh. I guess I don't know. Like uh, I mean, I, I'd say when it comes to celebrities, there's other females that I find personally. More I know, attractive. but we're doing the comparison of like. Would you just do it for the bump the band would get publicity wise? Oh, it'd be killer! It'd be so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, we, the, we've, we've talked about that. Like Lauren, for the for the sake of our career, you know, this would be a good move. But the reason we chose Angelina is because she has a comparable. Mm -hmm. career to leo where she's been in the the game a long time oh she's, sure she's and older aesthetic, but she's an older woman yeah mm -hmm. i mean I, for me i i think like jennifer lopez would be more oh uh, hmm. my style wow yeah and who's been around for equally as long and is probably about the same age that's in your wheelhouse yeah nice. <clears throat> there you go <laughs> <laughs> uh, we man. went a little less political on this pod than i no, thought we're, we're gonna there. go we're, we're loose. loose we're no. loose okay no this is fun so the last thing I want to talk about, um, just to put it on your radar, is Pete Buttigieg. Do you want to give a little recap of who Pete Buttigieg is, and I'll chime in there, Mikey? Yeah, sure. Uh, Pete Buttigieg is the mayor, uh, South Bend, Indiana, yep. and he uh, has thrown his hat into the ring uh, on the Democratic side uh, to run for president. So he's kind of this interesting up-and-coming guy because uh, Beto O'Rourke is sort of like this there's sort of like this group of like um, I think Democrats throwing their names and there's like kind of like the big hitters like Joe Biden and Bernie, Bernie Sanders yeah. and even like Elizabeth Warren, Warren or Kamala Harris and he's sort of like this kind of upstart young guy kind of looks like Brad Stevens the coach of the he Celtics does. yeah uh, who I think is also from Indiana I could be mm -hmm. wrong about that but anyway um, he threw his uh, his his uh, hat into the ring and I this one of the reasons he's interesting is because his story is that he's openly gay he's married and I guess the question would be Max what was one of the reasons you wanted to talk well, about is, well, is if a gay man is electable in America yeah so I just wanted to put uh, it on the, uh, his name on the radar because I'm a huge fan and I heard him on a podcast a year ago I was like oh this guy it sounds like the most thoughtful 
interesting person and with the temperament uh, that I think is needed in politics. And there's qualities that uh, he has that Obama has. And just in the way he's able to like really kind of get in depth in, in an answer, but make it very relatable. And um, over the last year, his name keeps on coming up. Like Obama name checks him as like, you know, one of the best uh, new Democrats. And he just threw his hat in the ring yesterday, as Mike said. Uh, but he's this interesting um, cross section of. Uh, like of uh, of uh, life experience and where he comes from. So he's from the Midwest, the industrial Midwest. He served in Afghanistan, so he has military experience. He's openly gay. He's a mayor, which is unusual. So there's a lot of things that just make him unique. And um, what I, you know, to me, just totally gut feeling. And he's been getting a lot of press, kind of just about this je ne sais quoi that he has. Just yeah, he's he's eaten uh, Beto's slice of the pie. This is, and maybe Beto peaked too early, because Beto yeah. kind of had this a year ago. He, um, Everyone's sort of falling in love with this guy right now, and, and he's cool, too. Like um, He's a big indie rock fan, and, he, and there was a video of him playing a Spoon song the other day perfectly, The Way We Get By. Do you remember that song from the yeah. OC soundtrack? And then Spoon tweeted, he's like, oh, so this guy can do everyone's job, huh? Uh, and then funny. Pete Buttigieg just tweets back, he's like, hey, man, it's the way I get by, which is I thought was kind of funny. A little pun. A little pun. And um, I, just, I really love him. And people who are skeptical go, hey, listen, this is America. They're never going to uh, elect a gay guy, at least not right now. And I want to throw it to you guys. Um, w- do you think the culture is at a point where America might elect a gay guy? Because everybody said Obama and America would never elect a black man, yep. and Obama was elected. And also, I don't know if that's such a hot button issue anymore. And the fact that he's also white and comes from the Midwest actually checks boxes for a lot of those Trump voters in Indiana, Michigan, Pennsylvania that th- they might find attractive. So people who typically wouldn't vote for a gay guy, what do you think they would rather have, a woman or a gay man in office? I don't think they'd like either. I mean, I'm well, well here, the reason I say is because Hillary was uh, she she got more votes than than Trump. Trump. Yeah, but won the wrong states. I know that, yeah. but I'm just saying it's possible to get a lot of votes, mm-hmm. and maybe if if a woman could get in, maybe a gay man could get in. Yeah, I mean. It's you know this I think it's possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the everything else in his skill set is is very appealing. And anyway, I just want to throw it out now. I know yeah. the election is not for another what year and a half basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I just want to be on the record right now saying I love Pete Buttigieg and I think uh, he's going to win the Democratic nominee. And I think he's going to wow. be Trump. You think he's going to win the Democratic nominee? That's what yeah. I'm saying right now. And you and then you think that he's capable um, as a gay man yeah. to win the general. Yeah, well, Cable is a great politician. And the other thing is that he, um, his dis- he's so um, calm and well-spoken. And whenever I think about any of the other uh, Democrats up against Trump in a debate, I see them just falling for all of Trump's tricks. You know, Trump is amazing at debating uh, Yeah, anybody. he gets these people to engage in ways they didn't plan to. Yeah. And he kind of wins, like, the schoolyard joke fight. Yeah, exactly. I think Buttigieg is, uh, won't fall for any of it. And... Uh, yeah, I'm just very, very excited about this guy. So that's yeah. all I have to say about people to judge. What do you think, Erica? Gay man in uh, politics? She's shaking her head. No. Okay. What? Do you not want to be on record to say that? No, I just don't want to. After last time, oh. <laughs> I talked about politics. After the essence, after the SNC Lavalin, uh, she, uh, Erica's just not going to touch politics. She'll, she'll touch Coachella, but not politics. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and I, I, so I think I think to sum it up, it's like all of us would vote for a politician, a gay politician, because honestly, that does not matter. Yeah, it's about their policies and demeanor and how they would approach things. I would hope that as you know, uh, we progress as a society, that everybody would sort of not count that. My fear is that that would be a factor for a lot of voters. And okay, and the last thing I'll say is that there's an interview with him on Fox News with Chris Wallace from a couple weeks ago. And I guess typically the comment section on YouTube for any Fox News interview is pretty harsh, to say the least, especially when they're interviewing a Democrat. And the comment section is filled with people who claim to be conservatives. And maybe they're just making this up on a fake you know, YouTube profile. Burner account. A burner account. But they're all like, I kind of love this guy. I voted for Trump, but this guy is, isn't condescending. And everything he's saying is make sense. makes sense. I love this guy. And so I, I th- found that to be like a hopeful Hopeful thing to read. Some hope mm. for the future. Yeah. Well, you know how, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's his name? Obama. Yeah. He w- <laughs> <laughs> how he, w- he was biracial, right? Or yeah. he is biracial. Yeah. Maybe they uh, started out with a, a bisexual person first. 
<laughs> baby steps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 we have to call in manager Ash to, to get approval of that. Mike on Much can be found on Twitter and Instagram at Mike on Much. You can subscribe to the show on any platform that has podcasts. Uh, Spotify, do it.